Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Jason Phillips. He's a Simpson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Jason, you brought along some friends here. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I think you, you possibly collected right along the roadways. We're seeing more and more of this. Tell us about this weed. Well, I did, and it's really easy to find. And about 10 years ago in our area, it was not nearly as prominent. Mm -hmm. um, but this is poison hemlock. And as you can tell, this is a pretty tall plant. Mm -hmm. However, they can get much taller, six or seven feet tall, even, you know, maybe taller than that. Um, but uh, so this is poison hemlock, and it can, uh, when consumed, have, have some toxic properties. Now, it has a pretty famous uh, part of history, mm -hmm. poison hemlock, does it? Actually, have. yeah, back in 329 B.C., it's credited with Socrates' death. So that's pretty interesting. So it's kind of don't eat things that you don't know what they Ex are. Exactly, exactly. And so this it has been more prominent in roadways, our pasture fields, those type of things. Tell us how to identify this weed. Well, it's a biennial uh, weed, meaning its life cycle lasts for two years. Mm -hmm. So the first year it's in the rosette stage, and then the second year it, is, um, it gets tall and erect like this and it'll have purple splotches okay. on the I stem. Okay, here, uh -huh. yeah. And it's got small dissected leaves, mm -hmm. and then you've got the white uh, blooms on your flowers. And so this is not the time to control this weed, but this is the time we get a lot of questions about it because it's so obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's really prominent in and around our pasture fields and hay fields, and that's why it's really a concern for our livestock producers. Because if your livestock consume this particular weed at a certain percentage, it could be toxic mm -hmm. and, and lethal to them. Yeah, 0.2 to 0.5% is actually lethal. So, I mean, uh, just for quick math, in a thousand pound animal, that's two to five pounds. Mm -hmm. And even when it's dry, it still retains its toxic property, properties. So we definitely don't want it in our hay fields. Mm -hmm. And typically, selectively, um, if there's good pasture available, cattle will not consume this. But oftentimes, we know calves can be curious and really not know and, and maybe consume uh, more than they should. And so we see a lot of problems. In, small ruminants and also calves. Now you mentioned the white blooms, but there are, there are other weeds out there with a white mm -hmm, bloom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so I've also got, it's often confused with this weed, mm -hmm. which has several names. Uh, as you can see, it's got the small dissected leaves, mm -hmm. very, very similar to poison hemlock, and it also has blooms that are very similar. Mm -hmm. But you can tell uh, this is more of a, stemmy, herbaceous type plant, um, where this stem is, is kind of more uh, woody. woody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's no purple splotches. This is known as Queen Anne's Lace or also wild carrot. Mm -hmm. Some people call it chiggerweed. It's got several <laughs> names. So. But not to be confused with this. Mm -hmm. But if people were and wondering. It's not toxic and it doesn't get nearly as big. So if, if people wanted a positive identification, they could probably send pictures or bring mm -hmm. that into the extension office for an ID? As a matter of fact, this isn't the particular plant because I wanted to bring uh, the root system in too. But as I walked out my door this morning, there was a plant laying on our, on our <laughs> back dock at our office of poison hemlock for identification. So certainly can do that. Now you mentioned that this is not the time to control it. Right. What do we need to do? Well, one reason it's not the time to control it is, as you can tell, one reason it's hard to kill, it's got this large taproot. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to kill this plant when it gets, gets to this size. Um, November is actually the very best time to treat this plant. And you may say, well, I can't identify it in November. No, it's not bloomed out, it's not as tall. But I can pretty well guarantee you, if you had a problem with it in a particular area uh, the previous year, then you probably will going forward. And of course, you can still see in the rosette stage, these leaves look the same way. And you can obviously bring them in for identification, but November and then March and April is the second best time. When they're to actively growing. Poison hemlock, yes. And we want our chemistries to work. And so that comes into play too, when they're actively growing and our chemistries like 2,4-D or, uh, or glyphosate. 
okay. would, would work. And we've had some reports about some sensitivity to this, so actually going in there and mechanically pulling that out uh, might need to wear gloves and some protection like oh, that, yeah. especially if you're si skin sensitive. So mm -hmm. Jason, appreciate the information. If you have questions, make sure to contact us. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.